I'm going to go over how to create a basic Likert scale. Now Likert was the person that designed this kind of scale. And what is typical of this scale is a set of numbers ranging from maybe 1 to 5 or 1 to 7, usually not bigger than that because it kind of gets out of control. And each of these numbers are labeled. And there's sort of gradual changes in the labels from 1 to 7. So we're talking about agreement on this particular Likert scale. So strongly disagree, disagree, slightly disagree, a neutral, slightly agree, agree, or strongly agree. And I'm agreeing with each of these statements. For example, the learning object was well organized. If I select a 3 in this scale, it means I slightly disagree with that. Okay? And so that's the basics of this scale. Now, a couple of things you should note. I used a, a range of 1 to 7. I like that range. I find a range, as particularly with adults or secondary school students, I think can handle that range and it allows them some flexibility in terms of their answers. Um, if it's younger students, I do a range from 1 to 5. And um, some people actually just use, they force people either to agree or disagree by choosing an even number. I don't agree with that practice. I think neutral is a valid response, and I like to get, leave that option open to the person who's filling in the scale. All right? So that's sort of the top part of the scale. Now the side part of the scale is the items, the criteria that you might, for example, be using to assess a web-based learning tool. In this case, I've written the learning object was well organized, and then the next item is the learning object was easy to use. Now, it's important that you have one and only one focus on each item. So you don't want to put the learning object was well organized and easy to use because we're not sure what the respondent is agreeing with. Are they saying it's well organized or that it's easy to use or that it's both? And then they wouldn't know how to answer if it was one and not the other. So that's, that's kind of important. And then you have the number of items. Basically, I suggest that you don't have any more than a page. And the reason you don't want to pay more than a page of items is, is uh, respondent fatigue. The person filling in the survey can get a little bit tired, and then their answers may, may be less valid. And then the other point is you may have 10 items, but those items might group into, say, two different categories. So you might have um, how engaging a learning or interesting a learning object is um, versus how ease of use or something like that. So you may want to have a few items, two or three items, focusing on each category that, that you're thinking of. You may want to do that, or you just may want to have uh, a number of items. It's up to you. Um, and then the last thing I like to do is have a couple of open-ended questions, just checking some things. They're always a good idea. So I might say, so overall, what were your impressions of this learning object? Just in case I didn't cover um, what they thought about the learning object. Maybe there was something else that was bothering about the learning object. Or I might say, what did you like about this web-based learning tool? What did you not like about it? So I like to leave an, an open-ended question. You get a lot of rich information, and it helps establish also um, validity of these statements, because if they mention things here that they, um, and say they really like, they say, oh, it's really well organized, and they rate it a seven, then those things are, are, are are supporting each other and so that's that's kind of a good thing as well so that's the basics of creating a Likert scale